but we've found some elk. There's bugles all over. This is freaking insane. Never seen anything like it. Travis got the spotter. We see some elk coming up this way, coming up to bed, so we're gonna try and cut them off if there's a big one. There's just bugles all around. How big? Probably 3.30ish. Nice. What do you think, Adam? Yeah, it's pretty neat. was in a little bit of the uh, junipers and it was going to be a marginal chance but now the bull moved right out into the open so if he gets to that same pine tree that we talked about before he left he's gonna have like a 30 yard shot downhill i just don't see him anywhere to give him a hand signal to tell him to go but um I'm just hoping he's got the intuition to start sneaking in there because right now the bull's sleeping. He's got his horn laid up against the hill. Probably 30 yard shot from that pine tree that he's gonna get to. I'm hoping he's just gonna go for it. You know, video from this angle as soon as I see him. So there's the bull bedded. If I zoom out a little bit, that big pine tree right above it is where Adam, we made the plan for him to go to. Hope he gets there soon. The wind is was marginal earlier, so he's holding off for steady wind, but the bull actually moved from a better spot. If Adam sneaks directly to that pine tree, which was the plan from the beginning. The bull's moved to 20 or 30 yards, so hopefully he can look around and see his top sticking up and stick him. That's in a really good spot to stalk right there. We got a bull there. Adam's there. That bull got up to move. Adam let out just a couple cow calls, and here he came. This bull's coming right to Adam, cow calling. Yesterday and the day before, we, we came really closer, both full draw yesterday. Adam 
Adam had a real big six. Kind of his, what a, your number one bull, isn't it? Yes. He had a big six at uh, like 26 yards. Just needed a couple more steps and he would have had an arrow. I had the seven by eight that I snuck in on the first day. In the dark, I couldn't see my pins. Had him at 20 yards. We're gonna head out of here for a couple days. We're spike camp way back in here. And there's a nasty storm coming in. I'm gonna get a quarter inch of rain tomorrow. We're kind of running low on supplies. And all of our batteries for our cameras and phones and stuff are dying. So I think we're gonna head out this afternoon, regroup, let this storm pass, and then come back in. We are getting ready for another spike camp adventure. Tired of dealing with people, so we're going in deep. Let me see the charging station. I got, I need some more ports. Got our charging station going with the generators, charging all of our electronics and camera equipment. People are gonna go one way, two people are gonna go the other, and we're gonna try and get away from people. Okay. We figured out some logistics and we got around the backside of this private where we've been scouting these bulls. And there's probably a hundred head, probably close to 20 bulls, a lot of big shooter bulls in here. And we got back in here yesterday, or spike camped out quite a ways back. And the bulls are just screaming down there in the flats. We're gonna sneak up around on this public land here and we're, we don't want to screw it up because there's a nice funnel point here. So if the wind's not right, not perfect, we came up with a uh, draw that we can just back out. We're going to sit up here on the brink of the hill. We should be able to see them coming up the canyon. And if the wind's right and they're going in the right area, we'll make a play. If not, we're just going to pattern them, see the routes that they take, and set up on them tonight when the wind's blowing down. We're first thing in the morning. Got them coming. All right, kids, here's an update. Bow hunting sucks. It's freaking hard, you gotta get close. Elk are so smart. I just kinda got lazy being in Alaska, it seems like. What movement you can get away with, caribou, moose, bears. Um, elk will bust you from a mile away if you're just barely skyline or anything. And uh, almost got one this morning, got close. Then 100 yards, working up a ridge to intercept a bull and then he went and bedded. But uh, now it's evening, got good wind. I'm gonna sit on this side, Trav's gonna go to the other side. We got some good escape routes. This is uh, more of an evening hunt, we think, because the elk are feeding down slowly to the fields at night, and we're gonna try to intercept them in the morning. They're tired, they're ready to go up in bed. I've been rutting all night and feeding, so they just kinda rip right through here. But hopefully tonight, I <sighs> have a good chance. Last night we were really close too, but uh, we will see, so stay tuned and it's about 4.30, bugles are just starting to pop off and it's about to get crazy. So at this point, Adam and I were set up um, maybe a quarter mile apart from each other and I was watching this bull and took some really cool footage of him as he was skylined and it was a 50-50 chance if he was gonna come down the ridge I was on or the ridge Adam was on.
this wasn't particularly the bull I was going out after anyway, but if he would have walked by me, I definitely would have shot him. Um, so I was happy to see him turn and start walking right directly where Adam was set up. finally happened. Set up and I ambushed these bulls coming down to get water and feed at night. And it's hard to guess where the cows are going to go. The lead cow kind of picks, but man, I just called it right. There's a road in the bottom of this draw, small piece of public, and they kind of patterned them and they came down this road. I could hear the cows and I was kind of exposed, but it's pretty light. It was like five minutes before shooting light. And, uh, all the cows came. I saw it kind of out of the peripheral corner of my eye like this. Saw the antlers, came behind a big juniper. I waited to make sure he was all the way behind the juniper, came to full draw. Great video, it's pretty dark, but you can see it right in the, right in the video. And uh, came out, he's like 32 yards. Cow called, he stopped, and I freaking hammered him right in the heart. He ran about 100 yards, bedded. Cow called to stop him, he laid down. He was coughing and kind of throwing his head around. And then the cows got up and took off and he tried to fall and made about 50 yards. I think he tumbled over the hill, heard a loud crash. And yeah, never saw him leave with the cows. Super pumped. He's a big six by seven. He might be 340 or bigger. So that's been a lot of mess ups on the bulls and finally let an arrow go. Made a perfect shot right in the heart. I'm super, super happy about that and grateful. So Trav's gonna meet me back here. He's working off a different ridge. We're trying not to mess up this basin because we still gotta get him and elk out of here. And uh, yeah, baby, bull down, freaking pumped. I saw, I got really good footage of this bull that Adam shot, come over the ridge, skyline, turns his head back and forth, screaming. Didn't know if he was gonna kinda go toward Adam or my side, and then he came down and his lead cow was heading toward Adam. And one of his cows actually completely left him and was coming toward my direction and it was calling him, she must have been interested in another bull. And I watched Adam's bull run about a quarter mile, got ahead of her, cut her off, screamed at her, kind of put his horns down at her and spooked her back, like, don't you even think about going to another elk. <laughs> really? Yeah, and she ran back to the lead cow. I was watching them walk down the road right toward Adam and right where he was set up. And I'm watching this elk in my binos. It would have been cool if I would have videoed, but I had an arrow knot because there was still elk around me. And I'm like, oh man, he's right close to Adam. And pretty soon I see a Luminoc from my direction. Like, I'm coming at my direction, just zip right through the elk. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me, just pinwheel that thing. I, I mean, I even saw the exit because I was looking on the exit shot and I watched the Luminoc come through that side and it looked uh, it looked just like a good heart shot. Buried in the ground. Buried, and then it disappeared. And then um, I watched the elk same thing at the Adam saw. I watched him go up on a knob and then I lost sight of him from my direction. I heard him coughing and I'm like, oh, that's a good sign. I, I don't think I've, I, well, I know for a fact I've never heard a bull coughing and not found him. That's a really good sign when they start coughing right away. Not high-fiving yet, but we're pretty sure. Yeah, I don't high-five usually until I found him, but I'm confident enough to high-five on this one, actually. <laughs> He's dead. Can't. Yeah, I killed something with a freaking bow, dude. That's yeah, hard. Sticking a string, man. That's freaking hard, man. <laughs> it's so challenging to get that close. But like you said, it's like depression, depression, depression. Finally works out. It's super special just because you're in close. You're in, you're in the zone, man. It's true stalking and hunting, and it's pretty, pretty impressive. You can do that. That right there is the great part about Luminox. See right where your arrow's at.
this out. There it is. What's that? Sweet. Good blood. I love tracking them. Yeah, then he tried to follow the cows this way. I heard him tumble somewhere around here. Should be marks. Crash off the marks and this. Yeah, he starts tumbling here. Spit. Is that him? Right there. Yeah, dude. There he is. Oh, dude, look at that horn. Look at that freaking thing, dude. Oh, my gosh. Adam, you got to be kidding me. Look at that thing. It's a freaking giant, dude. Oh, man. Oh, dude. I told you he's big. Yeah, he is. Dude, that thing is a giant. Man, but look at that shot. Right in the heart, I told you, I freaking hammered him. I hammered him. Man, these are so much smaller than a moose. This is awesome. Look at that rack, though. Look at the sword, man. Look at that inline seven on that side. Yeah, dude, what a freaking stud. <laughs> That's freaking awesome, dude. I guess we never did a recap. I'll do that tomorrow in the daylight. Got them all skinned out and caped out and all the meat off it. All the quarters and the boned out meat hanging in the trees here. I'm gonna head back to Spike Camp and pack him out tomorrow. 2022 Montana Archery Elk Tag filled. Still kind of hard to imagine that I killed this with a sharp stick, but bow hunting's tough. Got real close, got real amped up, real shaky, and uh, we patterned these elk coming down to get water at night. Walked right by me about 32 yards, and I cow called and stopped him, and man, just super pumped. The biggest bull ever is 313, and Trav taped this one to 340. Inline seven and a big six on this side, not broken. Had a bunch of cows, and it's just cool when a plan comes together, and uh, had a good setup after screwing up a lot of setups this week. And uh, yeah, cow called, he stopped and got shot him on video, great shot. And he ran 100 yards bedded and then he got up and we watched him tumble down this hill and got him cut up last night. We are gonna start packing. Definitely not a moose quarter. One to go and then we'll take the head and the cape and the boned out meat the last trip, three trips, three pretty light trips really. Do this in moose quarter, but elk's about a third of the weight. It's a front quarter with some boned out meat. We got a rear there. We already took two quarters out. We got some boned out meat in the tree. And the head and capes go next. Keep slammering. Where's your trekking poles, dude? Uh, I don't have any. I've used these wheels. Got about 20 feet vertical to go on this path. Yeah, these hills aren't very big compared to what we're used to. I know. It's like a, you get to the top, it's a big plateau. You can walk for days. Got it super secure on there. Get flexible, big boy. What? Get flexible, big boy. I'm not very flexible. <laughs> there you go. I guess I can't go, oh, I don't make that sound. So used to moose hunting. Okay. You got everything. Thousands of dollars in here stolen out of the back of a truck in the early morning hours Saturday. Came down just for an archery elk hunt and I ended up getting one. I was pretty happy. Bringing home an elk like this may be many hunters' dreams come true, but for Adam Grenda, it now feels like a bad dream. 
woke up and it was like your worst nightmare. The elk rock was gone. Grenda lives in Alaska now, but is originally from Idaho and spent many years growing up hunting in Montana. He is now an experienced hunter and just wrapped up a two-week trip in central Montana, where he bagged a bull elk that would have been crown jewel in his collection of mounts. I've shot a lot of stuff. I shot a huge Boone and Crockett moose this year, a uh, Boone and Crockett bighorn sheep, which is like most people's pinnacle, but this elk was probably my most prized trophy. And now he's on the hunt, again, for his elk rack and estimated $5,000 worth of stolen gear after it was taken from his brother-in-law's truck sometime between 3 to 5 a.m. Saturday. His brother-in-law was driving the bull back to Idaho and parted from the hunting group early, stopping at the Come On In for a couple hours of rest. It crossed my mind, but I'm like, you don't need to bring an elk rack inside. It's like 90 pounds with the cape, and you're not going to take it through an elevator and upstairs into a motel room for three, four hours. Hindsight, probably should have done that. A police report has been filed, and Grenda is hopeful people will keep a lookout for his Akuyu duffel bag full of a majority of his hunting gear with his name and phone number on it and the elk rack. You know, you can eat the elk and you can have elk meat, and my kids are all going to enjoy it and everything like that. But at the end, that meat's going to be gone, and I want the memory on the wall. I can't believe a coward would take that. Grenda was on his way back to Alaska Sunday. Although mostly empty-handed, he is grateful to get back to his wife and six kids and that everyone stayed safe on this hunting trip. We're happy. We're healthy. At the end of the day, you can replace stuff. In Billings, Haley Monaco, MTN News. So Adam shared the news on social media and it just spread like wildfire and we're grateful for everybody that participated in posting it themselves and sharing our post because it didn't take long that thief sold this rack to an antler buyer and the antler buyer reached out and said hey adam i i think i got your elk rack in my shop and so um, he reached out to adam and we got it back in our hands unfortunately the thief has not been caught and he did he's still stuck with a bunch of our gear that we'll probably never find but that's all replaceable, this elk rack isn't. So we're grateful that we finally got this elk rack back in our hands once again. We thought it was a lost cause and we thought Adam was never gonna see this elk rack again. Um, but you can see where the thief, he just chopped the bases off and um, sold it to the antler buyer to get it chopped up in the dog chews. Um, I'm just so grateful the antler buyer did the right thing in contacting us. So as we continue to give you free content to watch, all we ask in return, is to give us a like, subscribe, and hit the bell to stay updated on our newest hunting episodes. Thank you for watching.